Good morning, church. Merry Christmas to everyone. How is everybody doing today? Well, I'm so very happy to see you all here today. My name is Watanak Hing. It is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Also, welcome friends who are worshiping with us online. I pray that the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God in this season of Advent is with you wherever you are, in your bedroom, in your office, in your living room, on your phone or on your TV, I pray that you will be inspired by today's service. Friends, whether you're here for the first time or you've been here so many times, please remember, welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest Methodist Church in the world! <laughs> Woo! Feels so good, you know? It's good to come together in time of worship. It's good to be in the family of Christ, brothers and sisters in faith. We are together to give our all to our God because we know that it was Him who gives everything to us. Our lives, our freedom, our salvation, the fact that we are here today, whew, we are so grateful. Friends, I would like to remind you that you are here today to worship God. That is the most important thing. So throughout the whole service, the scripture that we will read, the, the sermon, the prayer, the song, even the fellowship that we do today, I pray that you will be inspired. I pray that you will, you will be touched by the word of God. I pray that when you leave this place, you know that you love God even more because he loves you unconditionally. When you come in, you were given a bulletin, and in the bulletin, there are a few good announcements. I, I want you to uh, pay attention to it. The Christmas pointer tier that you, uh, you, you can uh, help purchase. The warm tree, uh, the, the, what do you call this? Charlie Brown Christmas tree right in the narthex. Uh, please uh, help donate uh, to this uh, project as well. This next coming, December 18th, uh, after service, Sunday, next Sunday, we will have a, a circuit Christmas gathering. We call it the pop-up Christmas pageant in uh, United Japanese Christian Church, which is also our Methodist church right next door. So please come. Everybody is invited, all ages. It's going to be a lot of fun. going to be um, a good time to celebrate Christmas together. Just want to let you know that last Sunday, the, last month, the Mission Christmas uh, uh, Mission Thrift Store gave a thousand four. $1,400, $4,000, okay, $4,000 to the church, and the year total is $15,000. This is, whew, this is good. This is the mission fund. This, this fund gives to the, the mission of the United Methodists, to the world, the missionary, the, the school, the hospital, the university, the seminaries, the, the work of the, the, the conference. This go into that part. It helps so that we are a part of the United Methodist Church. We are a part of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Can I hear an amen for that? Amen. And a big announcement right here. You see how I'm wearing Hmong traditional clothes? Just want to remind you that next Saturday, the 17th, we will have Hmong New Year. Everybody is invited. If you have Hmong traditional clothes, you are invited to wear. It look beautiful. You hear this? Woohoo! When I walk in, our chair a person of our church council said, "Who let the reindeer in?" <laughs> I hope that friends who are worshiping with us online don't hear the jingling all the time because you know this jingling is right next to the microphone. All right, friends. Without further ado, are you ready to worship? All right, I feel your energy, I feel your enthusiasm. I invite you to be in the attitude of prayer, in the attitude of, of worship. Let us be revered, let us be in reverence to our God. I invite our acolytes, Joyce and Grace, come down with the candles, the light of Christ, representing the Spirit of God is with us. The Bible says, wherever there are two or more people gathered together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is with us. He is there to speak to us, to talk to us, to challenge us, to nudge us, to move us and encourage us. Friends, be ready. God is amazing. 
especially in this time of Advent. Let us celebrate. Let us worship together. I would like to invite our liturgist, Andy, to come help us in time of worship. Andy. Good morning. Good to see everyone today. And in the call to worship, I'll do the leader part. You do the people part in bold. In the midst of the barren land, in the midst of the dry desert, in the midst of sorrow and sighing, we shall see the glory of God. Please stand as you're able for the opening hymn of praise. My soul gives glory to my God. Standing for the Lord's Prayer, please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Continue standing, if you're able, for the scripture. Today it's from Luke 1, verses 39 through 56. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is he, she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has been spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months 
and then return to her home. The word of God for the people of God. God. Please continue standing for the hymn response, Love Came Down at Christmas. children to come up, our wonderful, beautiful, handsome children, everybody, please come, let's give them a big round of applause, (laughs) look who they are, they're growing up slowly but surely, or very, very fast, right, by the time you know it, they will be 13, (laughs) right, Michael, yeah, all right, hey, do we love our children, yes, we do, let's say it, we love our children, one, two, three, Oh, do you hear that? They love you. Do you love them back? Yeah? Do we say we love you too? Can you come scoot down a little bit so we can close the gap? Come on, Alina. Come. Close up. Scoot down. Come on. Everybody sit down. How is everybody doing today? Thumbs up if you're doing good. You guys are doing good? You had a good breakfast? Yeah? You enjoy it? <clears throat> I'm so very happy that you, you wake up and you, you dress up and you come to church with your parents, yeah? Very, very nice. You come to church with your grandparents. I'm so very happy. I pray that God will bless you. Let me ask you a question. Do you love your sister? Yeah? Do you love your sister? Do you love your sister? How about you? You love your sister? Uh, Haley? Yeah? Do you love your sister? Akong? Good. Do you love your brother and sister too? Wow, you're good. I'm so glad, yeah. I'm so happy my children are not here today because... You know, if I ask my six years old if he loves his 10 year old, I'm sure I'm going to be embarrassed. You know, (laughs) I don't know why. They just never say it. But I'm so happy that you love each other. That's good. How many of you have cousins? How many of you have cousins? You have cousins? Do you meet with your cousin very often? No, not, not so often, but sometime, right? Like family reunion, party together or dinner together, right? Do you love your, your cousins? Yeah? Can you name your cousin, one of your cousin's name? Evie. Evie? Yeah. How about you? One of the cousin's name? Michelle. Michelle. Yeah, yeah. How about you, Haley? One of the cousin's name? Huh? Danny? Naomi. Naomi. Oh, wow. You love your cousins? Do you talk to each other? Do you play game with each other sometimes? Yeah? You play online game with each other, right? One time I saw you at your home, you were sitting in a table, like six, seven of you, you don't look at each other, but you play with each other through the tablet, right? That was, that was something, you know, like grandma pointed out to me, look, look at this generation. That's how they interact, you know? They, 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 they are, they, each of them has an iPad and they were playing on the iPad and they are playing with each other. They see each other on the iPad, you know? Like, I know it's probably above your head, but that's what it is right now, you know? That, that's what it is. But, but my point here today, I'm so happy that you love your cousins. Because your cousins can be great help for you in the near future in times of need. The story today, we talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was going through hard time. You know, she, was, she, she had to make important decisions. You know, when women become pregnant, they, they, they worry a lot. They have a lot of things going on in, in their mind, especially for Mary. It, it was a special situation, you know, when Jesus was conceived in, Ma, in, in Mary's womb. So she needed help. Guess who she went to? She went to meet her cousin, Elizabeth. And Elizabeth and Mary talked to each other, hugged each other, share love with one another, encourage each other, and then Mary could go through her hard time and she could give birth to Jesus, the one that loves us and that we love so much, okay? So I pray that you will continue to love your sisters, your brothers, your siblings, your parents, and your cousins too, 
Okay, those are very important people in your life. They will make you great. They will help you, especially when you need them. So I encourage you to remember your cousin and pray for them, okay? Let us pray for our friends. Let us pray for our cousins. Let us pray for our family, okay? Can you please join me in time of prayer? Close your eyes, bow your head, and let us think. Let us talk to God together. Can you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Lord, please help bless our brothers and sisters and our cousins, our parents, our grandparents as well. I pray that your blessing is upon everybody in this church, that we are also siblings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Help us to be good and faithful disciples for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. You may go back to your seat. Let's give them a big round of applause, friend. <laughs> How is everybody doing? You still enjoying the service? Thank you so much, the music team. The music is great. Thank you, uh, Andy, to, to lead us in time of worship. That, that's amazing. That, that's very good. Let me share with you a, a funny story here. <clears throat> this is about the preacher coming to preach, right? And so he, to that day, he forgot to bring his note. And so he was like, oh, I'm going to wing it, right? So he got up and he preached about the story of feeding the 5,000. Right? And so he said, well, you know, Jesus was trying to find a way to feed the 5,000s. And then his disciples came and told him that, well, you know, we have 24,000 loaf of barley loaf, bread. 24,000 uh, bread. And we have 50,000 fish. So it's okay to feed the 5,000. So he will go ahead and feed the 5,000. Then the, the congregation member were not very happy, but they didn't say anything. After the service, he pointed out, hey, you made a big mistake there. You know, you gave us wrong information. Why would you lead us astray like that? So next week, come up, <clears throat> and then he corrected his sermon. He said, well, you know, last week I told you that um, there were 24,000 loaves of bread. There were 50,000 fish. And, you know, I asked you, how could Jesus feed the 5,000? And you said, yeah, sure, you can feed the 5,000. Right? And so, actually, the Bible says there were only five loaves of bread and there were only two fish to feed the 5,000. The pastor asked, do you think you can feed the 5,000 with two, loaf, two fish and five loaves of bread? The congregation said, sure, we still can. The pastor asked, how? He said, with the leftover from last week. All right, friends, be very careful with our church members, you know. <laughs> friends, today we are here for the third Sunday of Advent. It's a time that we are waiting for the coming of Christ. Every Sunday of Advent, we light a candle. Today, we are going to light the third candle. And as I'm lighting this candle, I pray that you will say the prayer with me. Okay, when I'm writing the third candle, uh, the, the three candle, each candle, I would like to invite you to please read the liturgy together. Let us say it together. We light. Let us be in the attitude of prayer. Let us breathe deeply and slowly. <clears throat> Sit comfortably wherever you are. Find your feet on the floor. Rest your hands either on your laps or on the pew. Breathe deeply and slowly.
Let us remember the reason for the season. As we are here celebrating Christmas, celebrating the birthday of Jesus, giving thanks for the fact that Jesus, that God reincarnate to be, to be flesh, to be human, to be among us all. Let the word become flesh, according to John. And as we are grateful, as we give ourselves to God, as we come to worship him, let us remember our friends and our loved ones. Remember those who are traveling. Remember those who are sick. Remember those who might need encouragement. Remember those who might need guidance. Remember those who are lonely. And we pray that the Spirit of God will be with all of those, all of us, all of us here. I ask that you will also pray for our country, pray for the world, pray for peace, pray for, pray for those who, who need God's comfort right now. Lord, hear our prayers as we give ourselves to you. May, our, may this act of worship be acceptable to you. And Lord, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you were offered a promotion, would you accept it? If you were going to high school or going to college or graduating into the next step of life, will you take it? Because it's bigger responsibility. Because it's harder. Sometimes when you decide to take that responsibility, you start to doubt whether you can do it or not. Whether you can perform from the best of your ability to do the thing that you are called to do. To bear the responsibility, the ability to, re to respond. The act or the mission or, the, or the, the call that is given to you. Sometimes you can be down. Sometimes you just know I, I'm okay with where I am right now. I'm not going to step up. I'm not going to become a supervisor. I'm not going to become a manager. I'm not going to become a business owner. I, I'm not going to. I'm good right now. Right? Last week we heard a story of Mary and, 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 and the angel Gabriel. The angel come and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Mary was like, yeah! Woo! How can that happen to me, man? I am the only single young girl. Nobody know who I was and now I'm going to be the mother of God? Yeah! Not really. You know? So it was like, 13, maybe 14, you know, living in a, a, in a small town, going through ordinary life, follow the tradition, be faithful to her fiancé, you know, Joseph. And to hear something like this is out of ordinary. It's big responsibility for her. But then, as a faithful follower of God, she respond, how can this be? And I am a virgin. Big question. How can this be? Last week I told you about the journey from the dorm room to the laundry room. When I, when I first came to the United States, the, the, the weather was different. Uh, I, I came here in, 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 in on December 31st you know, year 2007, 
So, you know, I actually started to live in the United States in the year 2008 in, in January, right? It was so cold. And I went to work and I was working for Subway and, and, and the school. And then I, I walked home, you know, through the cold, through the cold day. The journey from the dorm room to, to the laundry room, it was right after my friends, my roommates, out of good intention, did a prank, you know, by putting all these gingerbread cookies in my bedroom, right? I told you that I, I'm coming back from work. Uh, I, I come back from work, and, and it was so cold outside. Was you know I never experienced anything like this before. It was a, a long, tiring day. Coming back, took shower, just want to go to sleep, right? Got onto my bunk bed, and I started to smell gingerbread cookies. You know, it smelled delicious for a while, but then I was like, wait, cookies here, cookies here, cookie there, cookie everywhere. Right, and then in my blanket, in my you know bed sheet, in the pillow. Now you cannot sleep. Probably two dozens of cook, uh, ginger cook, uh, gingerbread cookies in the in, on, on my bed. So I had to to take everything to the laundry that night. After you were so tired, just want to sleep, you know. And then the, the 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 head didn't go like, oh yeah, my friend was just being funny. I uh, just being friend, you know. Everything is good. It's gonna be all right, you know. No. That journey from the dorm room to the laundry room, it was like, am I doing the right thing? Why do they do this to me? It's so hot already. Am I welcome here? What am I going to do? Should I go home? I'm homesick, you know, and all that, right? But then the promise of God sustained me. That I was called to seminary to go to Bible school to prepare me to be a preacher. And that's what I want to do. And with God's help, everything will be possible. Right? And that was the scripture that we read last week. And I thought, I, I pray that if you didn't get anything from last week's sermon, it would be from this Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Nothing is impossible with God. Now today, you heard the story of Mary after she heard this call, a big call, big responsibility, big promotion that she will become the mother of God. And now she rose up and asked the question, what is going on? What am I supposed to do? What's next? The scripture said, Mary arose and went with haste to visit Elizabeth. The Bible didn't really describe so much what's going on in her mind, what made her decide to go there. But I, 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 I highlight the word haste. You know, back then, if you were caught pregnant before married, big problem can happen. You might be stoned to death. Your fiance, which is your legal husband, will write you a divorce certificate and leave you and you don't want to do that you don't want to be that person so so how do you how do you respond to this before when she was with the archangel angel gabriel she was like yes i am the servant of god may it be according to god's will but now after she took that responsibility she was like oh this is bigger than what i thought what if the rumor goes out and people find out that I am pregnant while I never met my fiance? In her mind, she's like, I need a help. I need help. I need a, I need a help. I need a help. So I believe the first person that comes to her will be Elizabeth. Because right before that, Elizabeth just posted on her Instagram or on her TikTok, or on her Facebook, saying that, whoo-hoo, I am, you know, at the age of not able to give birth, but now I'm pregnant. No, not really, you know. Because the Bible said Elizabeth was also hiding. She didn't want to get out and let people know that she was pregnant when she was pregnant. Elizabeth was hiding, but Mary heard about it. They're a cousin. They heard about it that, that, that Elizabeth is going through miracle right now. That she, she, she is pregnant. Even though it was at her old age. So who else would be a better mentor if not Elizabeth? 
she ran right away to go see Elizabeth, to talk to her, to share with each other, to be with each other. As they are there together, Elizabeth said, And why is this granted me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Look at how they are so good to one another. As mentor and mentee. As cousins to one another. As, as women who were bearing, who were pregnant, who was going through pregnancy, who were going through some hard time, who might be going through some judgment that people might already have overheard. What is going on with Elizabeth? Or what is going on with Mary? Why is she gone? What is, what is Joseph doing, you know? But now they are together. They are together. That should speak to all of us, especially young people, as you are growing up, as you are seeking direction, as you are going through life. All of us, who are our mentors? Who are our mentees? Who can we talk to or be with and share love and share experience with one another? The mentor is somebody who has better experience. The experience that you look up to. Somebody that you want to be your role model. Somebody who, who loves God. Somebody who also loves you. And somebody who can keep confidentiality among the conversation. With our mentor, my life in seminary when I first came to the United States would not have happened. Would not be possible. But then, when I was going through hard time, I was assigned a mentor. Somebody who is a resident director, who has dealt with a lot of international students, who have heard a lot of fresh of the boat stories, you know, like the culture shock story, who have been dealing with a lot of students who are going through hard time in college. And I was talking to him. Very, very helpful. Somebody who, kept, who, who could help direct me into the right direction. Who could help me focus on the mission that I was called to do. Who helped me to understand that everything else is just a noise. But what is the main thing? Why are you here? And you can't do it. And everybody around you is in support of you. I remember one, one good advice, you know. Because after I gone through my, my, you know, gingerbread cookie experience, I went to my mentor and explaining all these things of the problem that I was having. And then one of the main problems that I, I talked to him is, it's very itchy here. Maybe it's the, 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 the detergent. You know, I scratch myself and it feels so good that it bleeds. My skin literally crack, you know. And my mentor said, you need lotion. <laughs> I was like, lotion? Who needs lotion? I never used lotion the last 26 years of my life. In, in Cambodia, only a woman used lotion. You know, the, the, the skin whitening lotion, you know. They want uh, their complexion to be a little lighter. So they use that. Guys don't use lotion. I mean, in general, right? I never use lotion. Well, what do you mean lotion? Oh, your skin is dry. That's why it's itching all the time. What do you mean skin is dry? My skin is not dry. And so let me show you how dry it is. Give him the hand. He used his finger and scratched me. Like, it's like a chalk on the chalkboard. Like, you know. And you see all these white lines on your, on your hand. You're like, what is going on to my skin? Yeah, yeah, it's dry, you know. It's ashy, right? Why did you, how did you say that, right? So you need lotion. I just don't know that. Sometimes the, 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 the help from the mentor is just that. And he said, yeah, it happened to a lot of international students. They're from Asia. They're from Africa. Their country is humid. Yes, it is hot, but it's most of the time humid. So they don't need lotion, right? But here in our country, especially in winter time, it is very cold and dry. You know, you need lotion and you need chapstick. That simple. That changed my life. That helped solve a lot of problems. Can you imagine going to bed and you just keep scratching, you know? <laughs> oh, it feels so good. And then you look at your nail and start bleeding. Oh, have you ever experienced this? Uh, you never experienced this. That's why you're quiet. But, you know, 
You should have been Asian going to American school and you know what it is. My, my point here is that's the benefit of having a mentor. Somebody who gone through it, who have a lot of experience and help you, guide you. And sometimes it's just a little click and you never knew it, it ever happened in your life. You never knew that you need that help. And that help is just so easy. It's solved. It is solved with a bottle of lotion. It's just like, wow, I never know about that. That's the power of a mentor. But then, not just only Elizabeth is the mentor to Mary, but Mary now is a confirmation of God's call for Elizabeth's life. Because as soon as Mary arrived there, she said, and why is this grant to me that the mother of my Lord, the mother of my Lord, Theotokos, the bearer of the Lord, the mother of the Lord is with me. Once again, back then, they didn't have phone calls to call each other. They didn't have to share the information through Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or whatever social media that they're doing right now. But how could Elizabeth understand right away that the baby in, Elizabeth, in Mary's womb is the Lord, is my Lord? You see how the divine appointment happened to both of them? It is when they cling together, when the mentor and the mentee come together, life happens, direction, light shows, and everything becomes much better. They lift each other up. Let me emphasize this again, friends. Who is your mentor? Who are you walking with? Who is walking alongside with you? When I first became a pastor here, we know that uh, we have a uh, two big congregation, our English-speaking congregation and our Hmong-speaking congregation. And I was looking for somebody who can help me out. See, Fuli Chai, who is sitting next to us, like, with us right now. Back then, he was, not, he was not a pastor yet. But as he got confirmed by his church people, his friends, his Hmong friends, that he would be a good pastor, he came to me and said, you are my mentor. You need to walk alongside with me. I want you to hold my hand so that we can all do this together. We've been doing this together good, huh? That's good. Got onto the roof together, mowing the lawn together, right? Party together, growing weight together, right? Oh, a lot of fun. But that's what we are doing together, right? Now I encourage you to think, who in your circle Maybe your children, maybe your grandchildren, maybe your brothers, maybe your sister, who might need a mentor. Or maybe who is in this room can be your mentor and can be your mentee. Maybe who in this room you can invite for lunch or for dinner just to get to know each other better, to show each other that you are there for each other, to confirm the call of one another. Remember, you are here not by accident. It is by divine appointment. God has a big plan for all of you. Let's share this life together. Share this life with one another. I encourage you to be the Theotokos to one another. To be the mother of the Lord to one another. When you meet each other, how do you bring the message of hope, the message of love, the message of peace, the message of joy, the message of Advent season to one another? People out there need it, friends. Some of them are very lonely. Some of them don't know what will happen next. Some of them might not even be able to find food for the next meal. They might just need your call. They want you to be the Theotokos, the mother of the Lord, the bearer of peace, the bearer of joy, the bearer of hope to one another. Bring it. Bring it to your family. Give them a call. Call them to meet you. Eat together. And join each other at the meal. I remember d -car. How many of you remember d -car? Julie, you better remember d -car, right? Because whenever I met d -car when she was still living, she called me, she said, she told me that every day, her everyday job as a retired school teacher is to help whoever she come across with to find joy, to find a reason of laughter, 
to find a reason of smile. You see, I've been talking to you for less than two minutes, and I have put smile in your face. And that's what I want to do. Because said, every day when I wake up, I call somebody. She says, she called you, Julie. Right? Every morning, 9 o'clock is my appointment to call Julie and to give her the confirmation to make her laugh. And she called her friends. I don't know who else. Maybe uh, Dory. Maybe uh, the, the, the um, special friends group. And You know, it's, it's the message of comfort. And I want you all to be that messenger of love. I want you all to be that Theotokos, the mother of the Lord, the mother of hope, the mother of love, the mother of joy, the mother of peace, and bring that message to whoever around you. It's important, friends. The world needs all of you. You know, because sometimes when we, eat, we meet each other, we, 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 we are not the mother, the, the, the mother of peace, the mother of joy, the mother of, of, of hope. We, we become... It's my way or highway, you know. We, 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 we present the, 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 the very political point, you know. Somebody is bad, somebody is good. I want this person, I want that person. And, and, and you think your idea is better. You think you're good. And then you, you, you stop talking to one another. You start talking at each other, right? That causes confusion. That causes conflicts. That causes chaos in the family. And then you wonder, why don't they like me? Why don't I like them? Because you forget your mission. Your mission should be the mother of love, the mother of God, the mother of peace. You go in and you talk to one another. That's the great simple advice from Jesus, right? You go, what do you do? You love each other. You love each other so that they know you are my disciples. Remember that. Remember that. Even, even Elizabeth, she said, when, when the voice of your greeting came to my ear, the babe in my womb leaped for joy. Right? You need to be that mother of love that you will go and you bring excitement, you bring love, you bring joy, you put smiles on people's face. And if we all believers, Christians, can do this to a community, we are fulfilling the mission that God has given to us it's to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And it starts with who? It starts with you. And one person at a time, people who are in your circle. When Mary heard this, the lady who was going through a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, did a lot of travel, trying to find comfort, now she met the comfort, she met the mentee, now she experienced the love, and she experienced the confirmation of a call, she came up with what? With a song, with a song of praise, I'm going to just put it on the wall, maybe you can read it, it's small, but let me say, it, read it to you, right? My soul magnified the Lord, the spirit of joy in God, my Savior, he looked on his servant in her lowly estate. And then she just started going on, telling how good God is. She started sharing the, the faith that she has in her God. Knowing how God loves her so much, even the fact that she is so poor, God still chooses her to be great. You know, when I was thinking about how Mary sang her song, the Magnificat, Mary's praise song, songs of praise, I think about Christmas song. That give us joy, give us comfort, Remind us our faith. Remind us about our faith. Remind us about how, who our God is. And remind us of who we are and to whom we belong. Let's start thinking. Let's, let's hear. What, what kind of song, what songs of praise do you remember that changed your life? Let's hear it from one another. Anybody? Remember a song that, re that you really love a lot? That really changed your life? That really touched you? What is the song? Any song? Any songs of praise? Trust and obey. For there's no other way. Yeah. Great. Any other song? Yeah, Lord, I give over my life to you. Yeah, what else? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little simple. Touch you. Change you. Somebody else. 
Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Oh, that's so good. Am I good enough to be in the American Got Talent? I can sing a song anytime that you pick up a song, right? Here you go, out in a row, right? Anything else? Any other song? All right? Let's sing this one song together. Let's sing this one song together. How about we sing Joy to the World together? All right? Let's sing it. Sing it a cappella. Sing it loud. Sing it nice. Sing it good together, all right? Somebody can help me this. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature. Let's sing verse 2. So good, so good. Look at this. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let man their song, war fields and floods, rock hills and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sound. Let's sing verse three, sing it loud. One, two, three. He rules the world with truth and grace. And make the nation the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and one and one the of his love. Oh. May you bring joy to the world, friends. This Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent, we light the third, con the, the third candle in remembrance of joy. Think about a friend or family member, somebody around you who might need that joy. Take it out to her or to them. Sometimes you will find light and life when you can be a mentor or a mentee to somebody. The benefit of both being the mentor and mentee. Now let us come together in the Lord's table. Remember how God brought the disciples together to remind them about one thing. That they are called to serve, not to be served. They were in the upper room. They were about to eat the Passover Seder. They were about to eat the meal that prepared for them. But before the dinner started, Jesus took the bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Friends, when you were coming in, you were given the Holy Communion element. The first layer, when you open it up, you will find the bread. Eat. Remember, the body of Christ broken for you. In our church, everybody is welcome to receive the Holy Communion. After the dinner, Jesus took the, uh, took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave to the disciples and said, drink from this cup. This is the cup of new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin. I invite you to drink from this cup. Remembering the blood of Christ shed for you. I pray that this time as you celebrate Holy Communion, you remember the unconditional love of God. You are invited to come to the Holy Communion rail, kneel down and pray. Or you can go to the, the candlelight station, light the candle, representing the light of Christ shining wherever there is darkness. And at this time, I would like to invite the Yang family to help sing a song in time for us to prepare for this Holy Communion.
Thank you so much. That sounds really good. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah, that's good. So please come back next week, okay? Please come back next week. Friend, thank you so much for being with us today. Now I would like to invite you to give. I would like to, to invite you to worship God through a time of gift and offering. We have the offering plate right next to the door. You can write a check and drop it in the offering plate. Also, I would like to remind you about your, the pledge card. If you have not uh, given us the pledge yet, uh, please fill in the pledge card right in, in the narthex on that uh, green table over there. It should help us, especially the finance team, to, to know how much, uh, what the budget should be so we can prepare for year 2023. So I hope that, I pray that you will be able to help us out uh, to, to really fulfill the mission that God has given to us, to us. And you can also give online. You can aim your phone at the QR code. It will lead you into a website that you can donate online as well. So that is the invitation, especially to those who are worshiping with us online. You can give through our uh, online as well. Thank you so much. And now um, let us say the dedication prayer together. Generous God, you have given us all that we have and all that we are. We thank you for the opportunity to respond to your love and generosity by sharing our gift with others. Our heart sings with joy as we work with you to bring true peace and justice to our world. As we prepare to the coming of your son, may our lives proclaim your good news for all throughout the world. The earth. Amen. Would you please stand for a time of doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Seeing people look east as we head west out the sanctuary. People look east, the tide is here. As we are celebrating the season, the joy and the hope and love, I pray that the Spirit of God will continue to be with you each and every day. Please remember to sign up for the egg roll cell. Remember the 17th is the month of uh, New Year or Christmas. Uh, everybody is invited. Please join us. The 18th after service, we go to UJCC for the pop-up Christmas pageant. The 21st is a blue Christmas Sunday, uh, uh, evening. We'll, we will do it on the 21st of December because it is 
the winter solstice, the longest night of the year to celebrate, you know, when you feel blue, right? You don't really feel good. And maybe Christmas, you remember your loved one, somebody gone before you that you really missed. That person left you, and now Christmas is not the same. If you want to remember that person, please come and join us. We will have a solemn a Christmas, blue Christmas service at 7 o'clock here in this place on the 21st. And then Christmas Eve is the 27th. It's the 24th. Christmas Eve is the 24th at 7 o'clock, all right? So I'm so very happy that you are here with us. Don't forget to, remind, uh, to bring your friends, to bring them so that they can experience joy and love among our faith community. Amen to that? Amen. So go. Go with the blessing from God. May the Spirit of God be with you as you know it. And be the light and the soul to the world. Be the Theotokos, Theotokos, the mother, the bearer of love, of peace, and justice, and, and, and hope to this world. They need you. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. And this will conclude our service today. And I will see you all next week, if not earlier. God bless you.